<laughs> okay, we're now live and recording. Uh, and hello. hello, welcome to Horestus Asia 2020. Also, welcome to this special session, um, a special panel with the title Voices of the Voiceless in Times of Crisis. And um, I think it's important to emphasize the voices, um, looking at dignity in terms of not only uh, inherent worth, but also um, what we uniquely uh, inherit from our ancestors in addition to um, formal education. So um, that's the voices. And voiceless, I believe it comes with the concept of humility. And I think it's the approach that matter when you, um, not that we'd like to suppress someone with ideas, we're opening up to, uh, to uh, new ideas, especially with this time of crisis. And times of crisis, I believe it's an opportunity. Uh, it, it's something that no one has ever experienced before, so no one can t tell us that they know better. So this is a time for all the voices that we have in this world basically uh, put together. So this is our special session today. Also, I'd like to include, uh, acknowledge the uh, on this particular platform. Uh, also, the sponsors. Um, um, this is the phone ringing. The speakers, also audience who are joining us now, and also some who might watch us later uh, on YouTube and other channels. I'd like also to uh, pay my respect to all the speakers here today. Uh, again, we're dedicating this particular session for the Jamaican Asia Pacific University, APU's uh, 20th anniversary, as a little contribution to something that we entered. And we, if we remember the day we graduated, we were empowered and, and inspired in a way to get out there and make difference. So I think this is a particular time we would like to contribute to that. And I would like also everyone to be to recall our memory back to the founding principles of APU, the principles of freedom, peace, and humanity, international mutual understanding, and the future shape of the Asia Pacific. And when I say Asia Pacific, I don't think it was meant to be a physical uh, geographical uh, location. I think it, uh, the Asia Pacific was more like a concept of philosophy of civilization. So uh, in that, I'd like to start our session today basically by saying I'd like to emphasize that this is, we're doing an ad hoc basis. I haven't actually did a discussion uh, overall with everyone, but I'd like to throw in a question to each and every one of you, and I'm requesting for, for your uh, voice. This is something that we all need at this particular time of crisis. Um, so right now, today, basically, we have Sapria from the... For the Middle East, um, um, we also have uh, Joy from the continent of Africa, Nigeria, and uh, Ivan from Indonesia, that would be ASEAN, and I myself from uh, Kingdom of Tonga, that's Oceania or the Pacific. So I'd like to start off, if that's okay with everyone, we'll start off. I'd like to throw this to Joy. Uh, if it's okay with you, Joy, uh, being the top better, basically, with the concept of unity uh, in differences, especially the, con the, the word difference itself. Uh, when I see difference, I think of competition. Uh, um, you know, there's some healthy competitions where there's a gold and silver, and there are also um, destructive competition which end up destroying the other, especially the kind of competitions that the winner takes all. Um, Joy, I'd like you to, uh, when it comes to that type of competitions, uh, we, we tend to, uh, you know, I, I think in our abstract, the term exclusivity becomes very important because the more we know, the better, you know, that the, the we can actually have a higher chance of winning in terms of education, of skills, technology, finance. Uh, but some economies don't follow that. Um, I'd like to throw this to you, Joy, and your value of, especially in comments referring to a very value system, especially with the impact of COVID-19 and your personal growth and your experiences, please. Uh, I'm throwing you the ball. Okay. Oh, thank you very much for your question. Hello, everyone. Um, as we progress, just like you highlighted about unity and differences, I think um, there's been so much emphasis mostly on unity that it became so common that I think highlighting the word differences 
basically has this shocking effect. Why do we need to think of our differences and what's, what's special about it? I think it helps us to redefine or re-emphasize the importance of unity or highlight it more. And um, just like you mentioned, I think we do have differences, which is why it is important for unity. Then now, how do we approach them? Because there's a lot of factors to this. One is the knowledge of each other. So um, interestingly, the international life, if you go through international life, like all of us has been international students, that's the first global university in Japan that pioneered multicultural, multilingual environment of learning. As we all expose ourselves to that international environment with hundreds of people, thousands of people from different hundreds of countries in the world and regions, I think the shock of you know, differences or similarity um, starts to become a passive question for some people or an active question for some people. And then it also triggers do we, you know, with the new knowledge of this a person different from us, but is a person similar to us, does it trigger us or does it motivate us to appreciate or embrace those similarities or differences? I think unconsciously we never really process this, but we bear a lot of similarities. If I would, uh, you know, explain from my own experience at the university. It's most easy to bear up to um, similarities, not differences, because we feel easily comfortable and safe there in our similarities. But then there was people like me who was excited with the whole differences and um, have had to go through a lot of experiences from that. Now, this basically shaped my whole process of international uh, career and activity, studying and work. Because the first thing, why am I even in business today? I did not think of doing business or being a business consultant or, you know, developing the first um, best private sector model for the Japan and Africa to create a new, you know, uh, relationship on a more direct level, you know, on a private sector level. I would not have thought of business if it wasn't that I came to Japan and I saw the difference of, wow, how come we don't know about Japan this much? How come we don't know about every other person here? And that was a bit sad and frustrating the first semester or first year of university. But I kept asking questions and I kept encountering many lovely people and many, you know, people who reject you because they're scared of your difference or something, you know? So it was a bittersweet mix of it. So I realized the importance that we take responsibility after asking or in, you know, interaction with many people. And I saw the importance of embracing the difference. And I realized it, it's like, I can't blame people for not knowing where Africa is or where Nigeria is or understanding an African person. And of course, unfortunately you have the global image that has portrayed Africa as a poverty nation, uh, as a place everybody's dying with crisis or, you know, political instability and all of that. So, well, should I blame the media? How much can I blame them? That would make a difference, you know what I mean? So luckily, my the platform at APU gave me that ground to interact with many people every day. Um, I never got tired of being asked where you're from, and then it turns into a 30 minutes conversation of getting to Africa, Nigeria, West Africa, you know, and then we start finding what we have in common and what we don't have in common and our differences, and we appreciate those. So that actually now led me to, okay, um, on a private sector level, how can, you know, I want to be able to build that um, differences because people think that, for example, Japan and Africa not being connected is because of... Uh, differences or, or, or not connected. I think it starts from knowledge. There was no um, factor, no, no um, in a spark to connect people to even want to know about Africa. There was already a fixed image and nobody wanted to veer up that. So that kept us to be focusing on our differences. And that was very, very uh, a big setback. 
So generally, from my academic process, APU inspired me, and I saw the, how the interactions with people actually made us to actually see our differences and our commonalities and embrace them and appreciate them. But it all started from knowing it. That's um, the chance to know it and connect and build from it. So that's why today my business is focused on, on the process of uh, true business because my academic study is focused on global management. So true global management and business, how can we build more interaction and use our differences to identify our unique strengths and yeah. then use that unique strength and our differences to build a collective bright future for each other. So if I will highlight what um, the chair mentioned of the, that differences triggers competition. Yes, differences does make some people feel competitive or make some people feel, uh, what do you call it, uncomfortable. But in this case, you also highlighted how it feels it's a winner takes all. Yes, um, in business, business is capitalism. And in capitalism is winner takes all. So um, that's actually a very interesting factor because I did not approach business from that angle, which is winner take all. I think with the unique environment or the unique differences I saw in the strength of Japanese private sector and the unique you know, um, strength in Africa's private sector, I rather saw how we can connect this two and we can give birth to something amazing through partnership, through understanding, sharing this. So my business consulting that it with connecting everyone to share about more about my country and my continent, which unfortunately has not been well communicated to the world. And from there, like, what is our strength? This is what the strength Africa brings to the table. And this is the strength Japan can bring to the table and how we can use that to share, to create a mutual beneficial partnership that Thank we you. all benefit from the common value. Thanks a lot, Joy. Uh, and if I pick a, a few things from the many things that you have mentioned, thank you so, so much. I, I, you know, you mentioned unique strengths and also sometimes we try to equalize, you know, uh, people when they are totally different. Yeah. Uh, you know, when it comes to gender, when it comes to nationality, I think when it comes to uh, more like healthy competition like the Olympics, you know, there is a common denominator. It's very difficult to uh, compete with someone at a very different level. So I think that's what you're saying here. Thank you so much for that. But if the quicker we realize the unique strength that we each have in terms of person, country, um, I think that the better we realize that we need each other. So that brings me to the next question. You talk about uh, uh a uh, winner takes all, and you talk about capitalism there. So I, that will lead me to my next question would be to uh, Ivan. Ivan is an entrepreneur. Um, he is in the world of extracting resources, also looking at solutions, how we can contribute to uh, sustainable uh, energy. Um, Ivan, uh, I'd like to ask a question to you about the world problem, um, right. especially the unlimited growth you know, mm. uh, we human beings, we, we, we have unlimited desire in a world that is finite. You have a finite planet with unlimited growth. Again, capitalism also look at growth all the time. Um, and sometimes if we look at the trend, the advanced economy is getting more advanced and in the cost of those in the developing countries who are facing the consequences of, of what's happening, let's say, the environment. Um, and, and maybe it's a, a concern. Some people might think that we should slow down a little bit. Would it help? I don't know if that's the, you know, but maybe COVID-19 is somehow telling us to rethink. Uh, it's probably already happening. I'd like to throw this poll to you, Ivan, to please uh, reflect on that. Yes, uh, thank you very much, Funaki. And it's nice to speak with everyone uh, today, uh, talking about uh, a really important and relevant uh, topic uh, and something that uh, needs to be addressed, uh, especially in our generation. And yes, uh, you're right. Uh, I have been involved in uh, natural resources and uh, business, related business for the past 11 years in Indonesia, uh, working uh, together with uh, a lot of Japanese companies and also European companies that provide uh, financing and uh, investment in technology. And uh, yes, I, I think uh, one of the most fundamental 
uh, knowledge that we need to understand, and maybe this can be varies from one source to another, definitely uh, in order for us to sustain ourselves in our current uh, consumption level, we need more than one Earth. Uh, one resources say we need uh, 1.75 Earth, and another another sources say it's a uh, 3.9 Earth. So basically, uh, I think uh, COVID-19 came just in the right time for us to reflect again on how we consume our uh, resources uh, to sustain ourselves. Have we live in the state of the world that we are resilient? Uh, to ourselves, right? Have we able to uh, spend uh, uh, enough effort to make sure that we are able to ex uh, utilize the natural resources that we have so that we don't uh, over consume it, but actually we're able to reduce per capita consumption that we have so that we can sustain ourselves, right? And uh, actually, just just today, uh, I had uh, actually uh, I had a meeting just before we entered. Uh, uh, just uh, we have the panel today, and it was a really interesting discussion about uh, one of our clients from Malaysia, uh, and it's uh, it's quite a big company. And 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 basically, one of the most uh, interesting part of the conversation that we had is that us, uh, especially from the developing countries, we actually are the countries, most of us, yeah, who have actually the resources, the feedstocks, the minerals, and all the world needs uh, to uh, energize the economy, right? But the problem is that uh, uh, as of now, we have really, uh, uh, we, we have limited access in terms of knowledge and technology, right? And, uh, and the mentality to actually uh, let us able to have a better understanding of what is actually surrounding us, right? So I think uh, having uh, all of us uh, in here have a common uh, 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 values and common experience by having ourselves educated in a multicultural university like APU, I, I think uh, uh, with what, what we are experiencing now, uh, contemplating on the experience that we had in the past uh, with our education. Uh, I, I think uh, what I would like to emphasize is maybe uh, uh, on the, the, the last point that I would like to address in, 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 this, uh, uh, in this talk uh, in, uh, that I would like to uh, mention now is whether we have agreed on a common problem together. I, I think with the limited resources that we have considering that we have uh, uh, the remaining resources that we can utilize, either that is renewable or, or non-renewable. Uh, do we agree that we should uh, manage these resources in a sustainable manner? And usually the one who are affected uh, in terms of these extractive industries are the ones who, who don't have any voices because they are being ruled by uh, people who have capital or have technology. So if we can empower the people, the local people, with resources, so that may, they may have a better understanding of the risk of of what do they have, and work together with these people, so that they are able to find the best value that they have from their resources in a sustainable manner. I think this I th should be a common uh, a common goal that all of us need to pursue in order for us to able to be uh, sustainable and survive in this uh, limited resources that planet Earth uh, does have. So I think that that will be uh, my part for now and we can continue the conversation later on. Thank you very much for Nike for the chance. Mm, thank you very much, Ivan. That's uh, um, very, very helpful, um, especially talk about common problem, especially the quicker we realize that we have a common problem, then I think that's uh, the, then we will we'll go back to joy and seeing the concept of difference. You know, we have, different way of looking at solutions. So I think the quicker we, you know, we see this as a common problem, then we, we look at it ourselves. And he also did come up with a solution of empowerment, of empowering of, of resource owners of, in a way that, you know, uh, lead to uh, sustainable consumptions by providing uh, in a sustainable way. Um, yes, we'll come back uh, for that. Thanks a lot for providing it's a solution, which again leads to relationship uh, when talk about empowerment, uh, the empowerment not coming from outside, but come empowerment from within, something that comes from within, it's more sustainable. The, the quicker we know what we have, that then 
then we know also uh, um, need we'll figure out the best way to share with others as well in terms of business. Uh, I'll throw in my 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 third question to Moeko. Uh, Moeko, uh, relationship is is a very um, um, very very significant uh, element in our you know for human beings for for humans who basically for us in our environment. I'd like to bring this to you because again coming from sustainable consumption. Fairness and humanity. Um, it's, we see, we hear the word fairness a lot of time, but you know the question is whose perspective are we looking at? Because if there are if there are people, if it's a couple, there's always two sides. Is it the fairness from my side or is it from your side? Um, and especially when it comes to someone that gives and someone that receives uh, in in you know developed nations and giving and and developing countries to receive, there's a glow and there's a power in the person who gives and also there's a joy in the person receiving as well how do we make the balance um should we keep the poor in the poor position and the rich to be richer so that we keep the glow in the joy of, of the receiving and the glow of the giver i think it becomes uh, a very important time to discuss again voices of the voiceless in times of crisis your voice is very important, uh, Ma Moiko. Please talk about, especially with locking down. Um, now, is it a, is it a chance that we should switch things around because now resources are not going? I'll, I'll throw this to you, Moiko, to please add on to the discussion. Oh, thank you very much. You slow me a lot of topic, and it, it's, <laughs> it's hard to discuss in forty five minutes. Uh, hi, I just want to introduce myself. My name is Moiko. I graduated from APU in two thousand seven. And I really like this kind of discussion because I feel like I'm back in APU. We always discussing what's the differences, uh, what's the different culture you're from. And I think I already know that um, there is not about rich and poor, but we all different in general. So um, I'm so glad that uh, after 20 years of graduation, I still be connected with those different people uh funny people uh i like the um she's wear she's still wearing the apu uh t-shirt t-shirt <laughs> i should have wear but i'm sorry i didn't <laughs> um, yeah. but anyway i'm so glad to have this opportunity uh first of start uh, before i started i just want to apologize that i haven't used english for 10 years <laughs> I've been in Japan. I, I actually I can live without English. So I I, I know that this kind of technology is great to be connected again, even this time of crisis. But still, for me, connecting by speaking English is hard. So if you don't understand, uh, please, Mr. Funaki, uh, ask me what does that mean. <laughs> So I went, I spent a great time at APU, and after graduation, I went to state to study applied linguistics because I wanted to be an English teacher in Asian country. That experience has come from uh, uh, when I was a high school student, I went to Malaysia and saw their great greatness of nature, but I heard from the local people that they local people, the forest has been destroyed by foreign drug company to correct plants for their research. And when I was heard that they were under contract not to be first to benefit from these medicines, I realized that as a, as being in Japanese, that there is inequality between, between developing country and developing country. And I thought, oh, what can I do to contribute to extend my strength? in such situations. So I began to uh, want to use my strengths, which is communicating with people, communicating global. I want to learn English more, but not only I speak in English, but I want to teach people to speak English, to ask for help, what uh, to say that is not fair. So uh, that is the reason I was in the, sta in the States for graduate school to study applied linguistic. And after I graduate school, I, I work with uh, refugees from Asia, and I was involved in supporting Ameri American, their American settlement and language education. 
And then later, I came back to Japan and started to working at the one of the largest foundation in Japan. And I work with a famous athlete in Japan to uh, to tell uh, other to to tell more people to involve social actions. I started the project called Heroes. You know, hero. Everyone has a hero when you are a child. So mm -hmm. athletes are kind of their children's hero. So Heroes Project is a social innovation program that seeks to use ex expertise, experiences, and human resource network developing by the Nippon Foundation where I was working at. And the social contribution activity on harmless, the power of sports to give children hope and dream for the future and create a better society for the next generation. And throughout working with the athlete, I learned that a social influencer, like YouTuber or athlete or model, can create the great impact on others who are people who are not usually interested in social work or differences. So I, I found it the value of working with those influencer. And then luckily somehow, one of my friends I met in Texas become the top world YouTuber. You guys, have you ever watched Lion's World? Lion's World is a Lion's World, yeah. Lion's World is a YouTube channel runs by eight years old boy. And his parents are Vietnamese and Japanese. So he's very famous in Japan as well. And he's a top uh, top YouTuber. And then one day he asked me, he was looking for organization to donate his money in. Mm -hmm. So it's actually what uh, he donated. I don't know how much does it, how much in English? It's about $100,000. Hi, that's the donation money I got from my wow. friend. And I thought, oh, YouTuber has a lot of money now. So I decided to work with them. And, it's, and I helped them to find a nonprofit organization or establish their, their own project. So I tried to merge uh, YouTube, like influencer power and nonprofit action together. So this is uh, what I'm doing. And did I answer? Yeah, Did I yeah I, I'm actually connecting what you thank you so much, uh, Moiko, because uh, the question was about relationship and you also talk about connectivity, um, relationship, you know, not only in the same language, but in order to, to have relationship with others in terms of, of communication, you need that to be transformed in, you know, interpreted in a way to be, uh, make sure that it's actually connected and understood from the other side. You also came down to uh, social innovation, again, as a way for, for, for relationships. And, and with this social uh, influencers, I mean, in, uh, 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 what do you call it? Uh, activity that you're doing right now, uh, I think that's a new type of innovations, uh, methodologies that it's opening up to new solutions of how yes. we can create a way to this, improve relationships. Yeah, this time, this types of confidence also create innovation, I believe. Because mm -hmm. if we don't have this technology, I could not see you after like more than another 10 years, probably. So this That's is right. the time. <laughs> this is a time of crisis, but this is the time to create innovation as well. And I really enjoy YouTubers and social action together. Yes, talking about opportunity. Thank you so much, um, Moiko, for that. We'll try to come back uh, if we have some time, but uh, thank yeah. you very much. We'll, we'll go to uh, Sabria. Hi, uh, Sabria. I'm leaving the last uh, main concept for our talk today to you to sort of like uh, bind them all together. It comes with the concept of interdependence. You know, the concept of independence has been sort of like cool all these years. You know, we, we try to be independent. We, you know, uh, again, it's, it comes with the idea of being alone and, and be confident and on yourself, we coming uh, come to realize that maybe it's important to consider other options. And again, with the concept of interdependence, 
I still remember when we were at APU, I was a, a management student, but I took one of uh, Professor Felizar's class, and that was the only thing I remember. He said, the law of geography is everything is related to everything else. And that's the only thing I remembered from the class. But it also comes from interdependence. I'd like to throw that to you again, uh, being a psychologist, in, in the expert of psychology and being at university education. Could you please enlighten us in that world, please? Thank you, uh, Funaki, and nice to see everybody again after so long, more than a decade since we've yeah. graduated. <laughs> um, but I have taken on board everything that uh, all the other panel members have, have said, and um, everything comes together, everything links. In terms of interdependence, I think this pandemic has really taught us that we have to be a lot more innovative and creative if we would like to progress and if we would like things to move on, um, businesses, all sorts of corporations, many different industries, people have had to learn forcefully to think outside the box. Um, and that has led to the idea of learning or establishing all these uh, mechanisms for interdependence. Um, in the beginning, I, I read so much about this pandemic and it was very negative. Everybody was 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 low, depressed, confused, and not knowing is this the end of the world? You know what's going on? But slowly, um, people started thinking. People started being creative. People started understanding that perhaps they need to strengthen their connections with other entities in order for them to to move on, to progress, for businesses to continue, for education to continue. So it's. Um, I think this this. This whole issue has, has brought some light into educating people to be more humane, to understand that we need to come together, we need to work together, we need to be, we need to understand that we have to rely on each other if we all want to succeed. Um, and this brings in the whole concept of unity, um, the whole concept of uh, mutual respect, mutual understanding, all these issues that are away from the technical sort of business type of, of things that we do. Um, as a psychologist, I study human behavior. I study um, human, you know, brains. And I teach that to my students on a daily basis. I teach students in management. I teach students who are doing accounting, HR, economics. And I, I bring something new to their degrees. I tell them, okay, you know all these technical things. You know all these managerial and business concepts. But it's very important if you would like to be a well-rounded individual to understand you need to be human at the end of the day. We all deal with people, so it's all about understanding people, being empathetic, understanding each other, um, and having patience. You know, all, all these um, these morals and, and values that we need to um, possess as as human beings. Um, this is where I see uh, humanity work in terms of in you know interdependence and trying to to live and survive this this pandemic. Yeah. Thank you very much, Priya. We, we have very good timing. We will finish our run round. I'd like to ask a quick, um, um, no need to go in order now. Uh, uh, basically, I'd like to, you know, a question related to the, the impactful learning that we all each have, basically, especially during this pandemic, and how are you implementing in your work, in your life? Uh, if we can just go around and have a short one so we can have, if we have more time, we can go around with some more questions. Maybe I'll ask Joy to, to go first, if it's okay. But make, make it short, please, so we can have a one run. Okay. No, I mean, Adi, just like Sabria mentioned at the end of um, her speech, is like we all face the same challenges and to be well-rounded through our work, we have to find that common um, similarity and that uh, that brings us all together. We got to look at differences to be able to coexist and to share our resources to tourism. And I think that's the focus of my business, which is bringing Africa's resources and Japanese resources together for us to find common um, value, how we can add value, create a new value and share a new value. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, uh, I think uh, the way I try to answer the question is that uh, basically uh, I can say that 
now we, uh, the world is uh, facing some kind of uh, significant changes uh, after the COVID-19 happening. And I think uh, uh, well, individually, I think uh, we have uh, more time to study uh, new things. Uh, we need, we are, we are able to know uh, 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 most of our... Oh. Okay, it's coming back. I'm back. I'm back. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yes. Uh, and individually, I think it is a really a great enrichment process for the past many months after the COVID-19 happened. But uh, uh, and but the thing that I would like to emphasize is that uh, we have more time to see what is actually our common problem to, uh, for the uh, as what I already addressed earlier in the conversation. And I think uh, I it, think it's about how uh, is it interesting to see that people that don't have voices uh, uh, before they have voices uh, to speak about uh, what uh, is becoming of their interest and what do they think is important uh, by having a lot of webinars and uh, you know uh, almost every day we can learn new people speak about new things. I think this is uh, really interesting. But I think it's about how we can uh, see the connecting dots uh, from uh, the changes of the world that we are facing now. Uh, can we actually work together, finding a common problem and, and keep on giving voices for the one that don't have voices and jointly putting an effort uh, together so that we can uh, work productively and effectively from one to another. So I guess that would be uh, my answer to your uh, question, uh, Funaki, over to you. Thank you very much. Yes, um, Moiko, you have something to add on. Um, I mean, the, <clears throat> the fact for the voice, again, this is about the voices of the voiceless. Um, a lot of voices we ignored for a very long time uh, because we put a label of who we should listen to, who are the experts. But this whole crisis is telling us that um, no one is expert, basically, of taking us forward. So we need to stop and reconsider our priorities. We, we, we define our our perspectives and our, our principles. So uh, um, again, uh, with going back to Spria and, and Ivan's talk, we, we now know and uh, realize that we need each other. And I think with that approach, we then realize that difference becomes important as Joy actually started with. We need to communicate this all over to in different languages and different ways of, of uh, approaching us. Michael, do you have something to add on again with how did this COVID-19 in, in, impact you? Yeah, I got so many time to think about my life again. Uh, during the COVID happened, I have a two years old daughter. I have to work from home. At the same time, I have to take care of my child because the daycare was closed. It was uh, it was a hard time that I, I realized I can't do both things. Two things are big job already. So uh, when I think about my life, now the older um, medical technology has been improved and people say we can live more than 100 years and i'm 36 now it's it's too too long for me so <laughs> i have to think about i don't want to get bored in my life so i wanted to talk with you guys and find something i really like and something every i feel everything has a meaning mm. So I Fair. want to figure out uh, new things, how to work, how to take care of my family and child, even this time of crisis. That's right. So we have a long life now, so <laughs> we have to make our life interesting. That's my comment. Yeah. Thanks very, very much. Again, with the people working from home, you know, we have a new definition of home now in home supposed to be a place for us to rest and sleep now we're making home an office yeah. so mm -hmm. we have to make sure that home is quiet enough for our little children not to run around and you know they kind of pressure is also around so uh thanks for for really yes uh, sapria could you also please add on uh we've got 45 44 seconds left um but i think i just want to wrap up and say yes it's just given us a new perspective to life a new appreciation of life. I like to look at this pandemic uh, in a positive way. And I, I like encouraging people to look at it positive, positively because we've been, we've been down for too long. It's, it's time to lift ourselves up and uh, see how we can move on. Yeah. Um, we have about five minutes left right now. Okay. So yes, in a, yes, we have uh, yes. six minutes. Uh, 
Yeah, and I think, I think that crisis should not only be a time that will make us need to connect. I think crisis, this crisis, this COVID-19 crisis have emphasized that we're not connected. So I think we should prepare ahead and build the infrastructures and the frameworks necessary for us to stay connected at all times. So when in, we face a common crisis, then it's not just the time to connect, we'll be prepared to deal with it more faster. Because I think because we're not connected, we did not deal with COVID effectively, um, the, this COVID crisis. We shouldn't be going through a third wave if the world is really connected and working together. When COVID began, Japan had some medicines, uh, the, the uh, I forgot what it's called, um, that Fujifilm invented. We have so many existing solutions. But however, because we're not connected, we can't bring that to life. And now we're having a third wave. I think that's embarrassing to humanity because we have in a body advanced country and non advanced country or whatever, collectively have something that we could have shut down fully effectively right at the start. And we, humanity didn't need to go through this process of a uh, third wave of COVID crisis. So I, I think it also raised awareness on uh, the importance of having a backup plan uh, to everything. Um, I think we lived too comfortably for too long that when something big such as this happened, um, a lot of people collapsed. A lot of corporations just went, you know, um, you know, went down. So um, I want to support what Joy is saying about uh, coming together and uh, working together and cooperating so that we all, you know, sort of remain sustainable together. Yeah. Exactly. Together sustainably. Thank you very much. We have about three minutes left. Um, uh, we basically, I'd like to just uh, summarize, and after a little time later, we'll go with everyone. I'd like to again. We're here in Japan, and the the kanji or the character of of, of a person of hito, right? Um, that we learned from day one when we studied Japanese, and something I still remember about relationship, and also that in order to support someone, and again, originally there's no one person, you know, to to be a hito, or basically there are two. So one has to be so support the other. When you support someone, you don't support from top; you support from from below. Um, and of course, in African uh, uh, minds also, you have something similar. So in Pacific Islands, we have do have something similar as well. I think it's a time to rethink of, of who we are and what we are. And, and we need each other, basically, since we have a common problem right now. Um, um, Ningen, even for for human, you know, it's it's a relationship or a distance between others. Um, so our my existence can only happen because of your existence, and the fact in in other words, we we think about the other, and I think if we shift the the, the mind now from thinking about myself and my well being, in thinking maybe also your well being, then the outcome will probably I get well as well because since you're well, I'll be well. If I think that. Because you exist, I also exist in that some sort of mindset. I think there might be some change. And we can also think about that in terms of education, in terms of business as well. Make sure that your business runs because I'll benefit from that. And we all think about that with each other. There might be a difference there. Again, I'd like to highlight and, and thank you everyone for your time and for the energy and also the knowledge from everyone's ancestors who are all sitting here. It's not just you and not just me. There are like thousands of people behind us and we'll might make sure that we take this to the, to the next generation through our um, continue uh, exchange of ideas. There's one minute left. I'll go around and want, want to say something now. This is your chance. <laughs> You just oh, had a oh, great wrap up, so I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I would just emphasize on what Simply said earlier, too. You know, we're learning to stay, you know, uh, how to say, strengthen, staying together and work together. So we will always be prepared and have a backup plan in time of crisis and do that through our different, um, you know, expertise and professional ability will be a good way to get started in staying connected in times of crisis. Yep, Ivan, any last words? Yes, uh, I, I, uh, the Economist today put a really interesting picture in Instagram. Uh, it's titled 20, 2020, the year the future was cancelled. And I disagreed with this title. And actually, my comment now 
is I think one of the top, uh, uh, one of the one that have the uh, most likes. I said that future is not cancelled, but future was accelerated as we embrace digital life in various aspects at an unprecedented growth rate uh, due to COVID-19. But I think now it's about how we should utilize this accelerated future for the benefit of the humanity. So I think I call this uh, as a time for us to collaborate together uh, and uh, find a common problem and let us solve this together. So that's my that's brilliant. Uh, last one. That's brilliant. Yes, that's a good, brilliant one. <laughs> yes, that's excellent. Thank you so much. And we hope that this is, uh, will be shared on YouTube for our um, APU uh, networking family. All the best we can do, make a difference together. Absolutely. Thank, thank you very much, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. All right. Bye. Bye-bye. Right. Stop streaming. Yes, stop.